you're a sky, cause you're a sky full of stars I'm gonna give you my heart Cause you're a sky, cause you're a sky full of stars Cause you light up the path on a topographic map. This video is going to focus on four features that are almost always associated with topographic map questions. Those would be bodies of water, hills and mountains, creeks and rivers, and depressions. Let's begin with bodies of water. Most of the time, topographic maps have some kind of body of water shown. This can be important when trying to determine the elevation of the contour line that's closest to the shoreline. So, here. so in this map, Darry Lynn Lake occupies this space. And lakes can occupy any elevation, which is unlike oceans, because oceans are really what we base elevation on when we say something's at sea level or above sea level, what you're saying is it's above the height of the ocean. If you were to be asked what is the elevation of the coastline along Darry Lynn Lake, you would need to find that out using the information here. Now, it's not shown, but the contour interval is 10 feet. And if I'm using the index contour that's already drawn closest to the shoreline, I would come up with a value of 240 feet. And this is important because that means anywhere along the coast. So if you think about how, how that coast stretches, anywhere along there, we're starting at 240 feet. And that's, an, that's a very important number to have as I look across the map. When a map displays an ocean, well, then we can start to think about beginning at zero sea level. And that's unlike the Darry Lynn Lake situation. Um, and notice how there's no contour interval given here. We'd have to figure it out. And because we know that oceans begin at zero elevation, we could do that using the index contours on this map. So we know that it's 100, let's say, feet um, up here uh, on the island. And if I'm starting in here, which is zero feet or ze you know zero elevation, and I have to cross one, two, three, four, five lines to get to 100, I know that it's going up by 20 feet. If I start at zero, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. So knowing um, that piece of information that oceans start, the shoreline starts at zero, is really important when you're not given a contour interval, and that might happen on different maps. Let's look at another example here of a pond. Ponds are a lot like lakes, same situation. We, they can be at any elevation. So we want to know what is the shoreline in this pond. We have a contour interval of 10 meters. We have an index contour of 50. So that means if I'm starting here at the shoreline, it's got to be equal to 30 meters. 30, 40, 50. So I'm starting at 30. Now let's take a look at another feature very common to topographic maps, and that's hills and mountains. Now topographic maps are drawn to represent three-dimensional structures in a two-dimensional space. This hill or mountain, whichever one it, you want to call it, um, would look like this from a side profile. So if you saw it in real life and you were standing in front of it, this is what it would look like. If I want to convert it to a topographic map, this would be its equivalent. Note the closeness of the lines on the left-hand side. Okay, if you look here, the lines are much closer together on this side, the, the left-hand side, to correlate with this part of the mountain, which shows a very steep incline, and a much more gradual slope on this side, to show a much more flat terrain in this structure. To give you another example, um, this again is a uh, two-dimensional shape, but when we project it into a side profile, this is the type of 
structure it would it would um it would come to and if you look at the series of circles within each other you can see that the two reference points the smallest circle which is on the inside refers to the peak of the mountaintop so always kind of correlate that as the circles get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller the last circle is going to represent the topmost point of whatever structure you're you're dealing with now depressions can also be shown because not only does the ground always increase in elevation sometimes the terrain goes the opposite way and gets deeper and to show depressions topographic maps you use Hochschur lines okay now Hochschur lines have little dashes associated with them and um, those will tell you that the ground is actually going down instead of up and there's really two things to always consider when you look for these features Hochschur lines um, point towards the center of the depression so these arrows I added in they're not typical on a topographic map but notice all those Hochschur lines are pointed towards the center towards the letter E that's the direction that that depression goes in and if you were not given information associated with the values this one happens to give you the index contour if you want it were asked what is the value of the depression lines um, in this feature the first Hochschur line is always going to be equal to the last contour line that you cross so in this case the value is 50 feet because the last line that was crossed was this 50 uh, meter line here so that was the last ISO line crossed so this would be 50 so it repeats itself and then the next line inside would be the contour interval but going down all right so let's look at a few examples to kind of practice this because it's, it's definitely a, a different point of view all right so here we are back at Darry Lynn Lake and let's zoom in on the depression contour in this map. So you're given an index contour here that shows um, a 250-foot uh, index. So I want to know what is this value? What's this equal to? Well, if I know the contour interval, which I do, it's equal to 10 feet. I can easily say, okay, this is going to be equal to 260, but let's just verify it by using the information that we have here. This index contour here is 300, so if it's 10 feet, this is going to be 290, 280, 270, so 270, right? This next one's going to be 260. So if this is the last contour line that I crossed, so to speak, this one would have to be the same value. So that would give me a contour line, or depression line, I'm sorry, depression line value of 260. All right, let's try another example. This one's now a lot harder because there's no reference given. So the index contour we're given here is 200, and the contour interval, if I look over here, this is 180, this line, this line is 200. So I know that there's a contour interval of 20 feet. So if this line is 200, this one's going to also be 200, and this would be 180. So, so a really challenging question to ask about Romano Swamp is what is the lowest possible elevation for Romano Swamp? And it's working in the opposite way than you're used to. So if I know that this outer line is 200, and this uh, depression contour is equal to 180, I can't say that Romano Swamp is at 180 feet because it's within that, that series of circles. So it's got to be a number lower than 180. But it also can't be a number lower than 160 because if it was, there would be another, there would be another set of depression contour lines inside of here. But there's not. The lowest I can go for this value is anything between 179, which is less than 180, all the way down to 161 feet. Because if I were to go to 160, I'd have to have a new 
depression contour line drawn. So if that was a question you were to be asked, it would have to be an answer within that range of 179 to 161. All right, let's move forward. All right, so for our final feature, we're looking at creeks and rivers, which also includes streams. They can be treated all the same. Most topographic maps will feature at least one or two rivers, creeks, or streams. And they should this map happens to show the Newburgh River and two tributaries, the Brigitte and Zemp Creek, which kind of fill into the Newburgh River. And typically what you'll be asked to identify is the direction in which they're flowing in. And there's is that rivers will always flow from high elevations to lower elevations. And let's go back to that same river now, which we were looking at the Newberg River and saying it flows this direction. And if I was going to give it a direction, I could say south, but a better answer would be southwest. But this is logical. I have here drawn in the different elevations for this contour map. It's 160, 140, 120, 100 um, feet, and then so on and so forth. Rivers are going to flow downhill. They're always going to seek out, water will seek out the lowest point and travel in that direction because of gravity. So I'm flowing from a higher elevation to a lower elevation. So it just seems logical that um, this thought process would work. Think about any stream or river that you've ever encountered. It always seems like the rocks or whatever makes it up are like steps and it's flowing down the steps because of gravity. There's a misconception, though, a silly misconception that throws people off regarding this, and I just want to point it out here, is that all rivers have to flow south, because somehow people have associated going south with going downward in real life. Like, if you were to go down on an elevator, you're really going south, which is not true at all. You're going down, different direction than going south. Um, and this is a good example here. On this map, the Cinder River is actually flowing northwest to be totally accurate, which is not against gravity. It's just the direction that the river's flowing to get back to the Atlantic Ocean. So don't make that same connection that rivers have to flow south. That's totally not true. Way to now always figure out the direction a river is flowing. And those are called V-shaped contour lines. If you look for them in a topographic map, they're always pointing upstream. And if the V-shaped lines point upstream, a river is going to flow opposite. That sounds like a lot of information, but when I show it to you here, it's going to make a lot more sense. So in my map, if I look carefully at the Newburgh River, I can see that there are these V's across it. And those are how the contour lines are drawn and bent. I can go all the way up to the top. Those V's are all pointing this way. So the river is flowing in the opposite direction. So whatever direction the V's are pointing in, the river will flow the opposite way. So for the Brigitte River, apply the same thinking. Look at those V's. River's flowing opposite to those. Let's look at this stream here. Here's my V-shaped lines. All right. So they're all, they all seem to be pointing this way. But the river is actually flowing, or the stream, I should say, is flowing that way. One more example, all right, the Stone River. Stone River is shown here, okay. Is it flowing into Pebble Lake or is it flowing out of Pebble Lake? So here's my V-shaped contour lines, right? My V-shaped contour lines. They're pointing upstream. The river is going to flow opposite. So in this case, the water is flowing out of Pebble Lake and down well, I should say northeast across the map. So we'll practice more in class, but that's all for now. Thanks for watching.